to Metal Titans Guardians of Metal Entertainment Worldwide. I'm here with Marcus of Blind Guardian. Thank you for doing this interview with us today. Now, of course, I heard you guys did just get here yes. <laughs> not long ago. <laughs> yeah. So, unfortunately, not a lot of time to really enjoy the Vancouver, because it's been a while since the last time you guys have been here. Yeah, uh, actually, we were looking forward to spending some time here, but, uh, yeah, we had, you know, the bad luck. We, we had a day off yesterday, stayed at the hotel in the name of the city, small city. Yeah. And we left this morning at 8 or so and we were supposed to arrive here around 12 so we would oh, have had time yeah. to go around and explore the city a bit more but then uh, the highway was closed for, for oh, because wow. everything was covered with ice. We had to wait an hour then it was open again. We ran into the next accident the highway was blocked again and then we had to go <laughs> all around through whatever mountains yeah, and just like, oh. arrived here at what 4.30, 5 something so, so um, not long ago yeah no not long ago and the crew was in a hurry setting up everything and Aww. we won't do any sound checks so we just oh just kind of wing it <laughs> it will work i mean yeah. you know sound check for us it's uh, we don't really need them you know it's it's no. like we we you know we, we change the set every day a bit and actually we use the sound check obviously to quickly check it but normally a sound check for us would be done within two minutes but then we yeah. Rehearse, you know, if we put a new song in the set, we just play it once as a little rehearsal and that's our sound check. So yeah. we can we can go without it. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, speaking of new songs, you guys are in support of your new record, of course, that came out quite a few months, well, not a huge amount of months ago, but um, just under a year ago. Yeah. Um, have you guys noticed the fans reacting differently to new material or is it kind of like an even balance overall? Uh, it, it's different this time because normally when we uh, when we put out a new album and we went on tour the reactions to the new songs were a bit lower compared to the old ones because mm -hmm. people still had to get used to them and uh, yeah. only on the next tour the formerly new songs were on the same level audience reaction wise. It's different this time. We, we played like four or five new songs from the album all over the tour mm -hmm. and the reactions have been pretty much the same compared to the old classics no, which good. obviously is great for us because it, it means you know people immediately dig the songs and you know yeah. they, they work perfectly fine in the live environment so we're absolutely happy about this yeah. we i have to say we didn't expect it because it, it's it's a typical thing that new songs normally you know have to grow on people so uh those time. ones, those ones yeah. grew pretty fast. That's good though, right? Like usually yeah. it takes a tour or two before yeah. everybody's kind of like, oh, okay, I know the words. Yeah. And exactly. But most of your guys' songs are easier to learn the words than, say, most like death metal, kind of like, they're heavy. You can understand the lyrics. Yeah, they're a little quicker for fans to catch on. But yeah. um, now, of course, you guys are both halfway through tour now. Have you had a favorite city so far? Shut up. <laughs> that is enough. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think favorite city would be unfair to limit it to one city because I mean there, there are so many great places we we visited on this tour or previous tours or whatever. Yeah. So just picking one would be it, it would be justice to the question. There, there are so yeah. many. I mean obviously, for example, when we play in Germany in, in, in Düsseldorf, which is just 20 minutes away from where we're living, it's our yeah. hometown. Even that's always very special because all our families and friends are there. Then there are some cities uh, that we just love when we had day offs there, you know. I remember, for example, on the previous, well, I think the previous tour, we had four days off in Sydney. Oh, nice. And I just fell in love with the city. When we yeah. came back again, now it's special because you have a connection to that city. And it's, you have places in Canada, you have places in the USA, Brazil. It doesn't matter, you know, there are yeah. great places everywhere. So just picking yeah. one. Limiting, yeah. yeah. Well, plus every but every country has its own culture and yes. ways of living that you, for sure. And like you say, you have four days off. That's yeah. so rare that's on a tour. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> but it helped to get you know over the jet lag because you know going to back then we we came from South America and went to Australia and we were dead the first days. Because, oh you really? Know, you, you, yeah, you, I guess the jet lag. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. pretty bad, but four days off. <laughs> you, it helps. You custom, yeah, the four days helped. <laughs> Now, of course, you guys have had your fair share of experience of playing small clubs, festivals. Do you have a favorite over, or do they both have their pros and cons? Um, they both have pros and cons. I mean, um, if you play a smaller club, 
the connection to the audience mm -hmm. is very intense because I mean yeah. they're close to the stage. You know, you you're mm -hmm. just closer to everybody. Mm -hmm. While if you play a big festival, you know, the photo pit is sometimes like ten meters, and only then there's the audience. Yeah, they're way on, up on the other hand. Obviously, you have bigger stages. You can do much bigger productions. You, yeah. you know, both both are great, and actually, I like going back and forth between both. Yeah, I, I can enjoy both, and um, I mean, we on this tour, not talking about festivals because we didn't do any festivals this mm -hmm. year, just doing our own headline shows. You know, it it changed from from whatever small clubs for maybe. Whatever, I don't know, 1,000 people to to 9,000 people venues and stuff. So yeah. going back and forth, it's fun because yeah. you know you get to experience both sides and it, it's it's, not just everything stays fresh. Yeah, kind of. keeps on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> now, totally random question, but not really band related <laughs> specifically. But <laughs> if you could bring back one musician who has passed away over the centuries of time, of course, over the industry. Who would it be, and for what reason? <laughs> Any genre, it doesn't have to be a metal or rock, um, but... There are a couple of names that pop out in, in my brain now. Gary Moore would be one, because he's, he has been an amazing guitar player. Uh, mm -hmm. Phil Lynott was, I mean, for doing Phil Lizzy, he should come back and do more albums. Uh, Cliff Burton, I never saw Metallica with him, I, I saw them on the Puppets tour, but uh, he died exactly one week before they Dave. were supposed to play the show Aww. where I wanted to go. So uh, those are a couple of names that, you know, come to my mind immediately. Yeah. Talking about metal guys. Yeah. I don't know why, but Freddie Mercury would be what and I would obviously, like to see. Obviously, yeah, just for, Dio, I mean like, Dio. Yeah, uh, Dio you know, too, they're, right? They're, like, they're, they're, there's so many that it's yeah. just like... It'd be really like Dio was one that I know what was like. I wasn't quite into him when he last came to Vancouver. Then the next time I was like, oh, you know what? I think I'll go catch him. And then he passed away. And I was yeah. like, oh. Well, I mean, I've, 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 I've been always off, a huge but. fan, no matter if it was Rainbow, if it was Sabbath, if it was his Dio band. Yeah. And uh, we played many shows together, so I met him at some point, and you know, he was an amazing personality. And I've never seen anybody, you know. Uh, Remember, it was was one of the shows he did with Heaven and Hell, and their intro was running, and he was still signing autographs for fans. <laughs> and you know, after oh, their yeah. gig, they came off. The outro was running, and he was already taking pictures with fans. Yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. No sound check today. Oh, big surprise! Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of sound check, yeah. <laughs> no, but. No, Dio was one that I know I was always like, I wish I could have, I wish I went when I was like humming and hawing and I was like, yeah. eh, I should have gone then. <laughs> yeah, the same Freddie Mercury, I never saw yeah. Queen and no, I mean me now it's not the same anymore, obviously. No. So, and I always loved Queen. But yeah, so did I. I grew up with it through my parents, yeah. so it's like, oh no. <laughs> but, yeah, some people definitely died way too early. Yeah, it's a shame when you hear about stuff like that, yeah. it's always heartbreaking. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Marcus, for doing this interview for Metal Titans. Uh, before we finish, is there anything you'd like to say to your fans? Yes, there is one message that you know uh, I, I started using those moments to tell people. You know, when you come to a concert, leave your fucking phones in your pocket. You know, look <laughs> through your own eyes. It's 3D. It, the colors are amazing. You know, and it's <laughs> it's high definition. You know, it's you know when when a band enters the stage and you know starts playing and you see the front row all holding up their phones, it's not fun. You know, just put them away, enjoy the show old school. It's much better. Thank you. Thank you.